What's up, Kim peeps? Free response time. A 1.22 gram sample of a pure monoprotic acid HA was dissolved in distilled water. <laughs> the HA solution was then titrated with 0.250 molar sodium hydroxide. The pH was measured throughout the titration and the equivalence point was reached when 40.0 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide solution had been added. The data from the titration are recorded in the table below. Boom! Part A. Explain how the data in the table above provide evidence that HA is a weak acid rather than a strong acid. All right, as we take a look at this data table, I think the easiest way to explain how the data in the table provide evidence that HA is a weak acid is to go to the equivalence point. At the equivalence point, notice that the pH is 8.62, or slightly basic, and that is indicative of a weak acid. The pH at the equivalence point is greater than 7. This indicates that HA is a weak acid. Remember, if it was a strong acid titrated with this strong base, the pH would be 7. Moving right along, part B. Write the balanced net ionic equation for the reaction that occurs when the solution of NaOH is added to the solution of HA. First, I'll write the complete molecular equation. Sodium hydroxide, solution, added to weak acid, solution. It's an acid-base neutralization reaction, so we're going to form water and a sodium salt. Don't forget this is liquid. Remember your sodium salt's highly soluble. Now, remember that sodium hydroxide is a strong base, so this is really gonna be ionized. HA is a weak acid, so it's gonna stay in its molecular form stuck together. Liquid water is gonna stay stuck together, and our sodium salt, highly soluble, is gonna separate out into its ions. Our spectator ion then, the sodium ion, appears in the aqueous form on both sides of the equation. Our net ionic equation, the equation without the spectators, boom. Probably a good idea here because I've written multiple to box in my final answer to be clear to your grader. The one that you have chosen as your net ionic equation. Don't leave it to chance. Boom. Part C. Calculate the number of moles of HA that were titrated. Well, if you go back up to the introduction, realize that it took us 40 milliliters of our 0.25 molar sodium hydroxide solution to reach the equivalence point. So, using my formula for molarity, I'm gonna plug in those values to solve for the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that were required to neutralize all of the HA. Calculator. X equals 0 0.0100 moles sodium hydroxide. Now the question is asking us for the number of moles of HA. So think about that equation that you just wrote up in part B. Realize that the ratio is a one to one ratio between the hydroxide ion and HA, or one to one between sodium hydroxide and HA. 0 0.0 one zero zero moles sodium hydroxide show this stoichiometry so i've got zero point zero one zero zero moles ha that were titrated again boxing it in for clarity done part d calculate the molar mass of ha well let's realize that molar mass relates the number of grams per mole now we know in this problem that we titrated a sample of our weak acid that contained 1.22 grams of that pure monoproduct acid. Boom. And we know, based on part C right above, that that is equal to 0 0.0100 moles of our weak acid. So if I know the mass of the acid that I titrated, and I know how many moles that is, I simply need to divide these two values to get the molar mass. Our molar mass is equal to 122 grams per mole. Boom. The equation for the dissociation reaction of HA in water is shown below. Boom. Part E. Assume that the initial concentration of the HA solution before any NaOH solution was added is 0.200 molar. Determine the pH of the initial HA solution. Oh man, pH 
of the initial HA solution. Well, we know that HA is a weak acid, and if I want the pH of a weak acid solution, you guessed it, ice table time. Yes! I'm gonna rewrite my equation, boom. Set up my ice table, boom. We're told the initial concentration is 0.200 molar. Not gonna worry about the water, these will each be zero initially. My change in concentration is gonna come based on the stoichiometry, all one to one. Combine initial and change to come up with my equilibrium concentrations. Next, solve for x. To do that, we're gonna use our Ka expression. Boom. Always, always, always write it out first in terms of the species in your equation. Next, we're gonna plug in our Ka value and the equilibrium concentrations from our ice table. Importantly here, we're gonna make the x is small approximation. I'm gonna be very clear about this. I'm just not gonna cross out the x. x is small approximation is valid because Ka and initial HA concentration differ by a factor greater than a thousand. Be clear about it. All right, now that is amazing because that will simplify our Ka expression to 6.3 times 10 to the minus five equal to x squared over 0 0.200. Calculator time. Parentheses. 6.3 second e, negative five, close parentheses, times 0 0.2, answer. Second square root, second, answer, answer. x equals 3.5 times 10 to the minus three molar. That is our hydronium ion concentration. To solve for the pH, we're just gonna take the negative log of our hydronium ion concentration, which we just determined to be 3.5 times 10 to the minus three. Negative log second answer answer. pH equals 2.45. Boom. Part E was a doozy, three points, a point for the correct substitution into the Ka expression. This is why it's so important to write your Ka expression in terms of the species in your equation first. Second point came from the correct determination of the hydronium ion concentration, and the third point came for the correct pH. So important, as always, show your work. Finally, part F. Calculate the value of hydronium ion concentration in the solution after 30.0 mils of sodium hydroxide solution is added and the total volume of the solution is 80.0 mils. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite the net ionic equation that I wrote from part B. I'm just gonna drag that down here and use it in part F. Boom. Next, let's take a look at where in the titration this pH calculation is going to occur. If I take a look at my data, recognize that we're trying to solve for the pH here at the point after we've added 30 mils of sodium hydroxide. Recognize that this is before the equivalence point. And so I'm still gonna have some weak acid, but because I've been added strong base, I will also have formed some of my conjugate base of that weak acid. And anytime I've got weak acid and conjugate base, you know what I've got, don't you? A buffer. Oh yeah. All right, so on my way back down, I'm gonna realize here, I'm gonna scroll down to part C and recognize that I started with 0 0.0100 moles of HA. So I'm gonna start with that in my calculation. Initially, I have 0 0.0100 moles of HA. If I've added 30 mils of my sodium hydroxide solution, how many moles of sodium hydroxide have I added? I'm gonna take a quick time out. Molarity equals moles over liters. The concentration of my sodium hydroxide solution is 0 0.250. Trying to solve for the number of moles after adding 30 milliliters. Quick trip to my calculator. 0 0 times 0 0 0 0. This means initially I have 0 0.00750 moles of hydroxide. No water, no A minus. Change, realize the hydroxide is my limiting reactant, which makes sense because I haven't yet reached the equivalence point. This is gonna decrease by 0 0.00750 moles, as will the number of moles of HA. These will increase. And this is not an ice table. This is just a way to keep track of the number of moles in a limiting reactant type situation. So it's not gonna be initial change equilibrium. I'm just put initial change final. I'll have 0 0.00250 moles HA. No hydroxide, 0 0.00750 moles water, which I don't really care about, 
and 0 0.00750 moles of A minus. Again, the reason why I'm doing this is because at this point in the titration, I have a buffer. And in order to determine the hydronium ion concentration in a buffer situation, I need to use this magical formula. Boom. Now remember, even though this formula relates concentration of weak acid to its conjugate base, we can use the ratio of moles because the volumes will cancel out. This is all happening in the same container. They'll have the same volumes. So it's perfectly acceptable to use number of moles. So hydronium ion concentration is equal to the Ka times my number of moles of weak acid, which after adding that 30 mils is only gonna be 0 0.00250 over my number of moles of conjugate base. And notice I formed 0 0.00750 moles of conjugate base. Now remember the Ka for our weak acid up here from part E, 6.3 times 10 to the minus five. So hydronium ion concentration Boom. Now, just to jump to our calculator. Times our Ka. Our hydronium ion concentration is equal to 2.1 times 10 to the minus 5 molar. On second thought, because this is the college board, it's probably a good idea that you do use the concentrations of your weak acid and conjugate base, and not just the number of moles but realize that in the problem, part F, they tell you the total volume of the solution is 80 mils. And so if we were to sub in 80 mils here, boom, realize that would give us concentrations, but it would still give us the same answer because again, those volumes would cancel out. Have a fantastic day.